Thank you, and thanks to the organizers for inviting me here. Uh, yeah, so I'm going to talk about counting curves and surfaces and its joint work with Juan Soto. So, sigma is going to be a surface. Uh, with R punctures or boundary components. And of negative R characteristic. Uh, gamma is going to denote the curve, or really a homotopy class of a curve. And when I say curve, I always mean close, but not necessarily simple. So it's an immersed curve in general. And we want to count curves, and I want to count curves in each mapping class orbit of the curve. So S sub gamma naught is going to denote the mapping class group orbit. Of gamma naught. So in other words, uh, all the curves of the same topological type as gamma naught. But So for each mapping class orbit, I want to count the number of curves there are up to some restriction on some um, complexity of the curve. For example, the hyperbolic length or length with some metric, so on, but with various things of complexity as the complexity increases. So. L okay, so as I said, some examples of complexity is the length with different metrics. So um, we put a hyperbolic structure on the surface. We can look at the cardinality of the curve, so as hyperbolic length, of course, I mean what the uh, geodesic representative bounded by L. And see what happens to that as L goes to infinity. Or I could put any uh, negatively curved metric on the surface, so some variable pinched curvature, for example. So. Uh, Again, ask the same questions. How many uh, curves are there in this orbit up to a bounded length? Or I could look at uh, some flat metric with singularities. So for example, it's translation surfaces and ask the same question. Or I could look at uh, a word metric. Uh, with respect to some generating set. And here I want to have a puncture or boundary so that the group I'm looking at is uh, free. So to be concrete, for example, if I look at genus 2 surface with one punct on puncture, and I look at universal cover, um, And I pick a standard generating set, so the side pairings is. And I look at reduced words in the letters A, B, C, D. 
and then I can count the number of curves in, a, in an orbit that has bounded word length. Okay, or I could do something more combinatorial. So, uh, for example, we fix some filling multi curve. Say mu. And I can look at all my curves that intersect mu a bounded number of times. We can count. What happens to that at L, as L grows? Or I could do some combination of all of these. For example, uh, if I have two metrics, say two hyperbolic structures. And I want to look at all the curves that have bounded length in both. So, or basically any combination of these, I could even do some so complexity. Could be maybe uh, have some hyperbolic structure X. I take the length with respect to that. I have some filling multi-curve mu. I take the intersection with that and maybe divide by the word metric on a curve and look at all the curves for which this is bounded. Okay. So what we will see is that for any up to certain restrictions, so basically how I picked it, I want if I scale my curve with L, I want my function to also scale by L. But as long as that's satisfied and has some con continuity, we're going to see that all whatever complexity I choose, they're all going to be comparable to L to the dimension of a tight Miller space. And we're in fact going to see that they're asymptotic to this in any of these examples. So in the case for the hyperbolic metrics, a lot of people have studied this, especially Mercer Connie. So let me say some of those results. Um, so we're looking at limit number of curves with bounded hyperbolic length by L compared to L to the 60 minus 6 plus 2 over. So first, uh, Riven and McShane. So that this limit exists if we look at a mapping class orbit of a simple curve on the puncture torus. So this limit exists for gamma not simple. Five. Then Mercy Connie did in her famous work show that this is true for on any surface. I'm not simple hyperbolic surface. And very recently, a preprint came out this year. She actually extended this for an arbitrary curve. So any immersed curve and the limit exists. And in fact, we can say what the limit is. So this limit exists. In particular, it equals for some constant that depends on the topology or the topological type of the gamma node, times a constant that depends on the hyperbolic stru structure. And for those of you that know, it's the Thurston measure of the um, unit ball in the space of measure lamination. So for the case of hyperbolic metric, the question is completely solved. Uh, 
And I should say something about the word metric, too. Ask the same question, but put the word metric on it for some fixed generating set. And Maura Chas has done a lot of work on this. She has a lot of experimental results that indicate that the limit should exist there, too. And she also has some results of a distribution of curves with different length of word metrics. So, uh, she has experimental results. And uh, it's something that we very recently started working on together, and we can actually show that. So I'm going to talk more in detail what generating set I'm talking about, so on. But for the case where we have a boundary, we can also show that the limit exists. OK. But as I said, as it turns out that it actually doesn't matter after a certain restriction that what kind of, um, of this complexity we consider this limit with the same polynomial exists. So, let me just state it as a theorem in quotation first. Um, so the limit exists. For all the complexities mentioned. I'm going to say it more precise, but in order to do that, I have to talk about currents. So I'm going to let C of sigma denote the space of currents on the surface. Okay, so what are currents? So they're really a, a measure on the space of geodesic in the uh, universal cover. So it's a pi one invariant. Uh, but you, if you don't know about currents, you can think of them just how what simple curves are to measure laminations. So our uh, general curves, so the space of all curves uh, to the space of currents. So in other words, if I look at, um, uh, if I take uh, positive multiples of curves, that space is dense in the space of currents. Just like simple ones are in space of measure laminations. So in particular, the space of measure laminations can be viewed as sitting inside space of curves. So, and one more thing about currents. So um, there is an intersection form. Which if we, so uh, maybe I should say this, any, uh, any immersed curve or multi-curve can be viewed as a geodesic by looking at, the, look at it, all the lifts in the universal cover and then the measure is if you have a set, you, the measure of that set is how many of these it intersects. Uh, so, and then the intersection is just the geometric intersection, but in general it's just, um, it's a unique uh, continuous extension to the space of currents. Right. So yeah, so now I can state the theorem. So suppose we have two uh, continuous real valued uh, positive functions on the space of currents. Uh, the scaling the right way we want with L. So, okay, so this might look very abstract, but if you want, you can think, for example, the length function. The length function actually extends continuously to the space of currents and is satisfied this. But this is more general more general functions. Uh, then what we really want is that the limit of number of curves is a mapping class group, so gamma naught.
such that, say, f is going to represent the complexity, is bounded by some L. What we want to say is that the um, cardinality of this over L to the 60 minus 6 plus 2R exists. We can't quite prove that. I mean, Maurice Sagan proved it, but we can prove that the ratio of 2, so if I change this f to g, that limit exists. I should write down what the limit is. So the limit is independent of, uh, of gamma naught. It depends on my f and g. Uh, it equals the ratio of the corresponding um, Thurston balls of radius 1 with, f and, with respect to f and g. So in particular, this means that um, the existence of the limit that we want, one of these divided by L to the dimension of a type model space, doesn't depend on the complexity. So if it exists for some complexity, it exists for all complexities. So meaning with choice of this continuous math that scales this way. So in particular, since uh, Mercy Connie showed that if I take f to be the length function of our hyperbolic metric, the limit does exist, that now implies that it exists for any of these complexities. Take any continuous positive function. Then the corresponding limit exists. And again, it equals what it should, some constant that depends on gamma naught times the Thurston ball of radius 1, respective. Yeah, yeah, that's true. So actually, all, everything that I say works if I consider currents instead of curves. So I count orbits of currents. Um, okay, so let's see why this, why this result implies the things I stated before, these different complexities. So in other words, why can I view those complex, complex, complexities as functions, continuous functions on the space of currents? Well, if we have a hyperbolic surface, And there exist special current associated to it, a Liouville current, that, so I said there's this intersection form of it. So if I take the intersection form with, of this current with a curve, it gives me exactly the length with respect to that hyperbolic metric. 
Yes, sorry. And in fact, you can do this for any negatively curved metric. So these things I've said about currents are really tall and bono. And in fact, also if I look at a flat structure with singularities, there's also such a current. So such a current also exists for singular flat. to moon sliding or rough. So this is the reason with those complexities I have that had to do with the length with different metrics. That's why it's true for those. And it's actually also true for the word metric that you can have such a current. So that makes sense. What I mean? I, again, if I look at the example before, with a genus two with one puncture. So this is when you universal cover, and we had the side pairings. If I look at the, the following uh, arcs on the surface, uh, this is arc alpha. This is arc beta. Gamma and this white one is delta. Uh, if I let mu be the union of these four arcs, that's a current. I mean, any collection of arcs or curves is a current. But this, the intersection of a curve with this current gives you exactly the word length. In this case. So this is with this fixed generating set of words. And so again, this is something I'm working with Moria Chas on. We don't know what happens if I change the generating set or if we, we think this should also be true for closed surfaces. But um, of course, the difficulty is that it's not a free group, but um, we think it should work anyways. Yeah, and as you... Uh, Egel pointed out that all of this works also if instead of counting curves, we count currents. So in particular, if I look at the Louisville currents for hyperbolic metrics, we're talking about orbits of points in Teichmuller space, and we can count. Yeah, sorry. OK, these are cyclically reduced words. OK. So let me talk a bit about the methods we use to prove these things. The 
first we translate this, the existence of this limit to uh, a convergence of a measure on the space of currents. For each L, consider the following measures. So these are measures on the space occurrence. Um, so we, we're looking at some fixed curve gamma naught. So for each L, let it be 1 over L to 60 minus 6 plus 2R. And then we count number of curves in the orbit we want. Um, and then the counting measure, the Dirac measure, is centered at one, the scale version 1 over L of the curve gamma. Okay. So what does, just to see what this means, so suppose this did converge, which we actually can't show quite, but suppose if there existed some limit measure, new, then the limit we want is number of curves such that f of the curve is less than l over l to the 60 minus 6 plus 2r. That's the same as taking that limit measure of the set of uh, measure lamination such that f of it is less than 1. So in particular, if this, if we can show that they converge, then the limit exists. Does that make sense? In fact, we show that it's equivalent, but. Okay. So unfortunately, we cannot show that that limit, or that those measures converge. If we did, then we would have a different proof of Mirzikhan's result. But we can prove the following. That if I take any sequence of these measures, it always have a convergent subsequence. And moreover, it has to converge to some multiple of a Thurston measure. The problem being that the, um, the multiple might depend on the subsequence. And notice that uh, theorem one, the one that's saying the, that the limit of a ratio exists, follows from this. So if we can prove this, we prove that, and from that follows that corollary that the limit exists for all uh, complexities. Okay. So I'm going to talk about how we prove this. Um, so notice that these are measures that have support on um, space occurrence, so which is like things that have intersections, while the limit things have support on measure laminations, on simple things. So it's uh, this relationship that we're going to investigate between curves with intersections and simple curves. So basically, this in some way is saying that statistically, as uh, so this is of course as n i equals infinity. So as the length gets very long, your curves start looking more and more like simple curves. Find a map from the 
that occurs we're looking at two simple ones, two asymmetric laminations, and in fact not all of them, but some generic sets. And what I mean by that is the, the curves I leave out compared to L to the 60 minus 6 is, uh, goes to zero. So if I look at the limit, I don't, I can um, ignore those other ones. Okay, so how do we do that? Well, if if I'm on a closed hyperbolic surface, it's easier to see how to define this, so let me do that. Uh, I'm going to define the angle of a curve with intersection just as being, if I look at all its self-intersection angles, take the biggest one of them. I just want to say if that thing is small, all the self-intersection angles are small. So. And if I look at the number of curves uh, of length bounded by L, whose angle is bounded from below by some delta, divided by L to the 60 minus 6, this goes to zero. for any delta I choose. So in a way the expected angle of intersection goes to zero as the length increases. So if we're on a closed surface then, so what this generic set is going, of course going to depend on how small I make this delta. And then uh, I'm just going to do sort of re to resolve the uh, intersection since it's a very small angle with very long curves. The resulting curve is very close to. And you also say so if I do have uh, punctures, it means that all large angles have to be around the punctures. And then um, we develop some new tools, some generalization of train tracks to um, to to get things that carry things with self-intersection, and then these, these things that have intersections around the boundary, we can kind of bound on how you can do surgery without, and get the bound on the resulting simple curve, how long it is. And if I have time, I might talk a bit about that in the end. But so, it's easier to define this map in the closed case, but we can do it for any surface. So once we have this map, um, so the goal is to show that these measures, the news, um, converge to multiples or uh, subsequences converge to multiple of a Thurston measure. So suppose this is one of the limit measures. Um, What we will show is the following, that they are invariant under the mapping class group.
and that they're absolutely continuous with respect to the thirsten measure. Okay, so this thing here is relatively easy. So um, the only problem is that this generic set is not invariant, but it's not too bad to get around it. So this is really the key step to prove this. And why this follows, I mean, why this implies that uh, uh, the limit measure has to be multiple of Thurston measure is because of a theorem due to Maser that says that um, a Thurston measure is ergodic with respect to a mapping class group. And if you have an invariant measure that's absolutely continuous with respect to an ergodic measure, it has to be multiple. So this implies that. Okay. The absolute continuity follows from the following. So this is kind of a technical part of the thing to show, but it's really just a combinatorial thing. There exists some constant that only depends on the topology of the surface, such that if I look at this, this map that maps things with curves with intersection to simple curves. Um, there can, of course, be many different uh, curves with intersection that maps to the same simple curve. But this lemma says that um, the number of fibers for each simple one is uniformly bounded by this C. And notice if, if this was an equality, say C equals five, I would say that for each curve, for each simple curve, there's five of them with self-intersections. And then we would know that the limit exists since we know the limit for simple ones. But so this is not quite as good. And actually we do show equality for curves with one and two self-intersections, but it doesn't generalize to higher self-intersection number. But it's always uniformly bounded. So how does this help us? Well, um, I erased the measure, but we had this thing. So if I push this uh, measure forward uh, to the space measure lamination through the map pi, I get uh, measure mu with support on space measure lamination, which is okay. And I know that this thing is bounded, so this is So here I'm just summing over simple curves. And this thing here, we know converges to measure, uh, to uh, the Thurston measure. So, um, 
Okay, I should have said something. So this is this measure that's slightly different, but we also show that these two are very close to each other. So measure nu and mu. Uh, have the same limits, so I get closer. So they converge to the same thing, and here we see that the mu is always bounded from above by the Thurston measure, so in particular, it has to be absolutely continuous with respect to. So let me talk a little bit about how we get this thing, which also has to do with how we get that the, for closed surfaces, the measure or the angles go to zero. Um, so we define something that we call a radala. Generalized. Right. Think of it as an immersed version of a train track or a, a um, diagonal extension of a train track. So we have a train track, so there's a complementary region. Track, or maybe puncture. We're we're allowing some extra edges um, that are allowed to cross uh, with certain conditions, so they're not allowed to be homotopic to one of the other edges and so on. Or if we have a puncture, you could wrap around the puncture a number of times and either go back to the same place or go somewhere else. And then, of course, we do this in a more precise way, but this is the basic idea of it. And so we show some of the uh, things that hold for train tracks also works in this case. So for example, uh, if I look at simple curves, there's a um, finite collection of train tracks that carry all of them. The same thing holds here. So um, this is a finite. that carry all, uh, say, all the curves in an orbit, or let's see, just, let's just say all curves with bounded self-intersections, so all curves with self-intersection less than or equal to k. Yeah, Radella, sorry. And moreover, since, yes. Yeah. No, so not necessarily. You could have a, you could have a very small intersection that's still carried here. Yeah. Yeah, so basically, so we define like an epsilon geodesic radala. So then the smaller epsilon is and if you have a big crossing, it has to actually happen in one of these crossings instead of here. Yeah. Yeah, so I didn't really give a precise definition. But so you have a train track. And then, so basically, so if a, a train track is an embedded graph on your surface, this is an immersed graph, such that there exists a subgraph of it that is a train track. And then, so, and the extra edges satisfying certain things that they have to start in in this, the cusp of a complementary regions, and they're not allowed to be homotopic to the, to the branches of a train track and so on. Does that make sense? We can talk more about it after. Um, 
But what I want to say is following. So I claim that if I have, <coughs> right, so if you're given a train track, you know how many curves are carried by the train track. And uh, what we show is that given a radala, there are, uh, there exists some k, such as the k times as many curves to self-intersection carried by the radala as simple curves for the um, train track. And the reason to see that is first, you can only go finitely many times over these x radius, because each time you pick up an intersection and we bound an intersection. So it really is just counting the ones that are on the white part. So, um, and this is actually how we get this bound C. So if you're somewhere along the train track and you, you put a crossing for two of your curves, you can slide this around and you get the same curve up to homotopy, but eventually you can slide it anymore. So eventually you get to a vertex, you can slide it, you go back, eventually they diverge again and you can slide it. So you can get some combinatorial bound on how many places you can put the crossing on. And that's how we get an equality for k equals one and two, then it's easy to actually get it, but as soon as you get to three, it gets very complicated and depends on how the train track looks. But you can always get an upper bound. Okay, so now to see um, the thing with that the uh, angle of self-intersection goes to zero. Well, um, so basically by this argument I said, we know that for train tracks, uh, when we're counting how many curves are carried by, or how many simple curves there are on the surface, and we have finitely many train tracks, uh, we know we only have to count the maximal ones, because the other ones correspond to a lower dimension of curves. So a maximal train track, right, are the ones that all the complementary regions are either triangles, if we're on a closed surface, or if we allow punctures, it could also have punctured monomots. So in particular, if I'm on a closed surface, the train track parts on my radala are all uh, triangles, which means I can't have any other red edges, which means that my curve is carried by an actual train track, and by making this as epsilon geodesic as you want, that means so all the angles, all the crossing angles have to be in a very small neighborhood of these branches and therefore arbitrary small self-intersection. Maybe I should write some of these things. Six, a radala, so I call the radala tau hat instead of tau for a train track. Um, look at the limb soup of a number of curves carried by it. <coughs> Bounded number inter self intersections, bounded length. This limb soup is always finite, and moreover, it's zero unless I have a maximal radala. Get a maximal radala, I mean the train track part of it is maximal, so it only has one of these complementary reads. So again, there's only finitely many to consider, so, and for each one, uh, I only get contribution to my limit if I look at a maximal one. So then it follows. I have a close. Um, and maximal radala. Maximal uh, train track.
So, um, segments of a curve. I said angles are arbitrary small. Okay, and then the last thing I want to say, so if, so this is, now we know how to define it if we're on a closed surface because the angles are arbitrary small. So if we are on, if we have punctures, we have things that wrap around Come back. So what we do is define this map pi first on the radala. So just take whatever weights, probably like one you have here, add it to corresponding branches here. So you get map from a radala to a train track. So and then you map the corresponding curves carried on that to the corresponding simple curve. And then we show that this actually makes sense also on the curve. So just do the surgery on the cut off each loop and you get the same thing. So let me end here.